Here we have sagittal and axial T2 weighted images of the lumbar spine. And so let's review some of the basic anatomy. Uh, first of all, we have five lumbar type vertebral bodies, L5, 4, 3, 2, 1, uh, connecting to the sacrum, S1 vertebral body here, and then T12 above. Uh, we can see each vertebral body is uh, fairly square, and uh, then we have an intervertebral disc at each level. Uh, we have the ligaments. Now the ligaments are dark on uh, most sequences, and they're dark here as well, and they're fairly thin. So anteriorly we have the anterior longitudinal ligament running down the vertebral bodies and connecting to the anterior aspect of the disc. Posteriorly we have the posterior longitudinal ligament running down the length of the spine, and then we have the ligamentum flavum posteriorly. Now, uh, it's easier to see on the axial in its full uh, extent, but here in the midline we can see this dark line here is the ligamentum flavum. And it has kind of an undulating course on the sagittal images. And so let's take a look on the axial here. And so the ligamentum flavum uh, runs uh, posteriorly here. It's this dark, thicker band running all the way uh, over the uh, lamina and then over the facet joints uh, out to the foramen. And so you can see it kind of has a uh, seagull shape uh, to it. And as we scroll up and down, you'll see that it's posteriorly located right here. As we go down, posteriorly located. But then it becomes more anteriorly located here. And that's why it has this kind of undulating contour. Uh, on the sagittal view, we can see the distal cord of the thoracic cord, and then it uh, terminates in uh, uh, kind of a narrowing here, coming tapering down to a point, and that is the conus medullaris. Uh, this is where it gives off all the nerve roots, both the ventral and dorsal nerve roots that are going to exit at all the levels below the conus, and uh, that is the cauda equina. You can see that real well here uh, on the axial images. Here's the distal conus, the thicker portion, and then you have all the ventral and dorsal nerve roots. And as you scroll down, you'll see that they start lining up two by two, one ventral and one dorsal nerve root. And uh, so let's look at that. Here are uh, one set, for example. You can see as you scroll down, they start lining up in the lateral aspect of the canal, and then under a pedicle, they exit. And then the next pair are lining up, and so forth, as you scroll down and they just exit at each level. And those uh, are the nerve roots. And so they exit out uh, of the fecal sac into the uh, neural foramen. And so the neural foramen, if you happen to cut it uh, perfectly in the axial view, you can see it here with the nerve going out. If we scroll out laterally, we can see uh, this nerve, for example, here, coming down, exiting just underneath the pedicle. So this is the pedicle. And then here is the nerve. So let's do that again. Nerve coming out, exiting through the uh, neural foramen. Pedicle. Let's look at the pedicle in the axial view. Here's the pedicle in the axial view. Okay. So in the neural foramen here, we have uh, the end plate anteriorly of the vertebral body. We have the disc here inferiorly and anteriorly. And then posteriorly, we have the facet joint. And so the facet joint has the inferior articulating facet from the vertebral body above, and then the superior articulating facet from the vertebral body below. If we look at the fecal sac itself, we talked about the cauda equina already, and uh, CSF is bright on T2 weighted images, and so you can see the CSF filling the uh, fecal sac here. And uh, fat is also bright, so we're going to have fat you know, in the back here, but also in the epidural space. And so the dura runs, uh, it's very thin, but it runs uh, around the fecal sac, both the dura and the arachnoid, and anything outside of that, but still within the spinal canal is going to be the epidural space. So here we have fat in the epidural space. And we can highlight that even better if we look at a T1 weighted image. And so here's a T1 weighted image. And we can see that CSF is dark on a T1 weighted image. And now we can see the fat real well uh, separating it from the CSF. So you can see as you scroll up and down that the epidural space is extremely small um, at the level of the pedicles. But then as we get down 
in the area of the uh, uh, neural foramen, the uh, epidural space is bigger and contains some fat here. Let's take a look at the vertebral body itself in the axial view. So here we have the body of L4 in this case. And uh, extending back, forming the posterior elements, are the pedicles here. And then we get into the region of the pars interarticularis. And uh, then extending back, we have the lamina extending down to join and form the spinous process. Now laterally, uh, here we have the transverse processes extending out. Here on the right side and here on the left side. Let's look at another level. Retrieval body, pedicle, transverse process, lamina to the spinous process. And then uh, here's the facet joint at this level. So the last two structures are the psoas muscles and then the SI joints. And so the psoas muscles are on the each side of the spine here, or the right side and the left side, and they continue down. And uh, inferiorly are joined by the iliacus to form the iliopsoas muscle. Down here we have the sacrum and the iliac bones, and between them we have the SI joint. So the sacroiliac joint runs right here, and it's partially visualized.